I have a list of eight plants I will never grow. Some I wish I'd never grown in the first place, and you'll want to stick around for the eighth one because I can almost assure you it's already in your landscape. Do you break into a sweat with even the thought of having company? I'm here to help. After trying just a few of my hosting tips, you'll be more than ready to say, come on over. The first one is spiderwort. Now I was given this plant to try out, not knowing that it is invasive in the Nashville area. We are in zone seven. All of these work in zone seven. And it's invasive because it spreads in two ways, both reseeding itself and with a runner that comes from the root. So if you like a plant and you want it to be a ground cover and you want it to take over, that's great. But in the case of the spiderwort, what happens is it comes up in the spring and it has this beautiful kind of purpley blue bloom. It's beautiful. Then it goes away and you end up with this kind of hideous green base plant that just gets worse and worse as summer goes on and it's not attractive in the landscape. So for those reasons, it has to go. You gotta go. You gotta go. The second plant is called a cardinal flower. I love cardinal flower and more importantly, hummingbirds love cardinal flower. I will keep cardinal flower in my woodland garden, but it is incredibly invasive. And that's because it has all these little seeds that spread everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean into the yard, into the fire pit. There's one out front, yards and yards away from the original planting. Now my mistake was I planted it along the edge of the woodland garden because that's where it gets the most sun and it does require sun. So if I had planted it further back into the woods, it would have spread exactly like I wanted it to, which it has, but here I am every spring, summer and fall digging cardinal plants out of my yard. I give them away, make other people happy and start their own overgrowth. <laughs> The third plant I cannot grow, but love, is Russian sage. I have tried growing this plant for several years, but it will not grow, it will not thrive. And I think I know why. It's because my yard has a lot of clay in the soil. In fact, it's a clay soil. It is a Middle Tennessee clay area. And because clay retains moisture and Russian sage wants a drier, less clay, more dirt than clay soil, I cannot grow it, which is too bad because it is a beautiful and kind of carefree plant. A lot of people in the Midwest grow it and West grow it. And they have these beautiful, beautiful borders with this lush purple Russian sage. Doesn't work here. And so for that reason, I have to let it go. Let it go. Number four is gonna strike some terror in your spring loving hearts because I will not and cannot grow dianthus. Now a dianthus is wonderful for its carnation like bloom. It's a very happy bloom and it has kind of a silvery blue foliage and those look icy and wonderful in a group of flowers and it mixes in nicely, but I cannot get it to rebloom. No matter what I do, I cannot get the dianthus to rebloom. And not only that, it won't rebloom and then insects or something gets in there and just destroys the leaves. It always ends up looking horrible. I've given it multiple chances in my garden pots. It fails every time. And for that reason, Dianthus, you are out. You're out of here! Oh, no, right no, now, no, Jimmy, I heard that! Number five is Nandina, which my publicist likes to call fire plant. I don't know why she calls it that, but she does. And I constantly say Nandina. Now a Nandina is very popular in the South, the Mid-South particularly. It is everywhere. And let me tell you, it looks terrible everywhere I see it. And here's why. While it is evergreen, and that's one of the reasons we like to have it in the landscape, 
not me, but you, it clumps. It gets these giant Muppet-like, like it's gonna start talking as you walk by. <laughs> clumps in the Nandina. And people do not trim it back and reshape the shrub. And for that reason, I have to ax it. If I saw a beautifully shaped Nandina, I might change my mind, but it's unlikely. It's not gonna happen. Number six is the dahlia. I love dahlias. I have tried to grow dahlias for years. The one I planted in the ground did okay, but dahlias, you need to dig them up, the tuber up every fall, store them, blah. I just, that is, I don't do that. I do not do anything of that nature. It did okay until it didn't do okay and I just got rid of it. So then I thought, okay, I'll grow them in pots because I love, did I mention? I love dahlias. I have a dahlia issue in my yard. It is not true in my friend's yards. Some of them, yes, some of them, no. I cannot grow dahlias because they are insect magnets. I can't help it, it's so beautiful. The actual bloom looks fine, but the foliage gets holes from leaf miners, I think, I've never actually caught anything. Could be slugs, I've put down slug bait. I have sprayed it with Captain Jack's organic spray. I have done everything you can do to save the foliage on a dahlia and it will not work. So I've given up on the dahlia. I'm not telling you to give up on the dahlia. I think you should grow them. I think we should all grow them, but I can't. And so for that reason, I won't grow them again. I never say never again. The seventh plant is a ground cover and it's called ajuga. Now there are different varieties of ajuga. I have the smaller variety and it, it's a kind of a purple green leaf base. It has this bloom, a beautiful bloom that's kind of a purpley blue that comes out in spring and stays for quite a while and then it fades in the summer and you can trim it out and you have this beautiful ground cover. And that's what I first started with when I first got this yard and I wanted to kind of work into the woods and I put it on the edge of the woods and it has taken over. It is very invasive in my yard. It's great for what I'm using it for, which is on a downhill slope. So it helps retain that soil and so it doesn't keep running off into the valley, but it spreads way, way too easy on these runners. And so it comes into the yard, I'm digging it out of the yard. It wants to take over where my Lenten roses are, I have to remove it. So I am constantly battling this ajuga. Now my friend Fran has a better version, a better variety of the ajuga. I love hers. It's a much larger base plant and it's much easier to control. So if I did plant it again, which I won't, but if I got a crazy idea to plant ajuga, it would definitely have to be the larger variety. You're going to need a bigger boat. And number eight, prepare yourself. You probably have this in your landscape. Monkey grass. True name, Liriope. Now, I know what you're thinking. Monkey grass? That's just even fun to say. Don't you have a monkey mug? I do. Monkey grass, I will never have in my yard. It clumps. It's very, very invasive. And it's extremely hard to break apart and get out of your yard when you decide, I think I have too much monkey grass. Now there is a variegated variety that's much easier to have. It does not spread like the traditional one, but you probably have the solid green, dark green variety. Landscapers love to use it. It has a really pretty leaf that comes out and then it takes over. And then you find yourself with the sharpest shovel you can find and you cannot break apart that clump of monkey grass. Also, Irritating number two is if you do not get in there first thing in the spring and cut that monkey grass back. And by spring, I mean in zone seven, that would be February, late winter, early spring. You've got to get in there and cut it all the way back before the new growth comes out. Because if you don't, you'll have to get in there with scissors. 
and individually cut them out because they look ratty, they look horrible, and I cannot tell you how many landscapes I have seen with really awful looking monkey grass that is edging what should be a beautiful landscape, and instead, all I see is that awful liriope. Think very carefully before you plant that. I, however, will never plant that. Me thinks the lady doth protest too much. Now you may heartily disagree with me on some of these plants. I would love to hear about that, but I would also love to hear what plants you will never grow again, because we gardeners can all learn from each other. I have a list of eight plants I'll never grow, some I wish I'd never grow. Nah, grown, nah, grown. I have a list of eight plants. I, it went away right when I said that. <laughs> so that's already not a great thing for Russian sage. It wants dry. Cut. Let us know that the producer's phone went off in the midst of filming this segment. Come on over. Now go make someone feel special today.